Tell me how coronavirus is affecting your operations. Sure. So uh, we began uh, dealing with the coronavirus in Macau, where we have uh, integrated resorts. And um, back in at the end of January was really when in China the uh, the lockdown began. And so we closed our facilities there. Um, and from January 23rd, uh, you know, we, we really worked with the government, with our people to make sure that uh, they understood the importance of staying home and that we are going to get through this. And what's been really interesting to watch because it was taken so seriously. Um, I've been talking to my friends in Beijing and in Hong Kong really from the end of January until now. Um, they, there was a sense of fear and panic and the grocery stores were empty in late January and not really sure what was going to go. And today, as of just last week, they've launched a national campaign that roughly translates to uh, get back to work and resume production. So traffic is bad in Beijing again. Um, and when you talk to people over there, there's a sense of optimism. Sure, the economy's fallen on tough times, but there's a sense of optimism that they've made it through. So uh, that emotional journey is really what we're beginning now. And uh, I feel like we're doing all the right things to slow the virus down so we can get back to work. From your perspective, why was it important? You were the first one to announce that the casinos were closing in Las Vegas and in Boston. Why was it important to get out in front and make that decision? Uh, because we are a place of large gatherings. I mean, that's what we do. We get lots of people together. And uh, for me, I just based on my experience in China, I knew that what we needed to do was not get a lot of people together. And so we made the decision even before the state of Nevada to close our facility here. And we worked in uh, concert with uh, Massachusetts to also close there because it's the right thing to do right now. You've got 15,000 employees who now don't have a job to go to and you're paying them anyway. How does that make good business sense? So of our 15,000 employees, more than 13,000 of them are hourly wage earners bartenders, housekeepers, food servers. And for those people, the idea that they've been told within a week that there is a pandemic in the United States and you need to stay home, and now you're laid off and you have financial uncertainty, that combination is untenable. And so for me, what I wanted to do was to take that anxiety out of our 15,000 people. So we're not only paying their salaries and wages, we're paying them what we think they would have earned in tips during this period of time. And the reason, Contessa, is we don't think of payroll as an expense, it's an asset. We're investing in our culture right now. Because when we come back, I want our people to be excited, to be happy, and to know that we're all in this together. This is a long-term investment in culture. Look, you're gonna have a lot of people listening to what you're saying and thinking, yeah, but you're a global casino company, you're rolling in dough, I don't have those resources. Talk about the fiduciary logic that goes into holding on to your people. Sure. So um, we are liquid, but we're not rolling in dough. We're, we're not an investment grade company, for example. Um, but when I think about how hard it would be to uh, go out and rehire 13,000 people and retrain and get the new uniforms and teach them on the systems and do all of those things to relaunch one of these buildings takes months and months and months of practice. We just did it in uh, Massachusetts this year, as you know. Uh, we don't want to go through that again. We d I don't want to lose all of, our, all of our knowledge and all of our expertise. So I'd rather pay for that asset so when we can reopen, we'll be ready. Do you think that that's a model that other companies, large and small, could follow? I mean, it's, it's certainly an investment in culture and it'll help everybody get back to work quicker and you know one thing that i've been encouraging congressmen and congresswomen and i've been calling them is uh, i love the small and medium-sized business plan where if you use that uh, those funds to pay salaries you will get a grant basically it's uh written off and for large employers because that's what we're we're large employers we should be able to borrow money to pay salaries and wages of our line level staff and health care benefits and then once we're uh, reopened and out of this we should pay it back not a bailout, just a liquidity bridge. And I, I believe that's what all the conversations are, are uh, happening in Washington, D.C. 
that uh, that is definitely moving forward. But that I think that that would be very helpful for all businesses around the country. How long can Wynn Resort stay in business and still continue to pay out salary? Well, we're going to, uh, we, we have a runway, but every day we're thinking about where can we save money. So as an example, last week I put an offer on the board for our executives if we could forego our salaries for the year and in lieu of stock compensation. Um, so the board accepted and they actually participated too. So I gave up all my salary last week for the rest of the year. Lots of our executives did between a third and 50% and so did our board of directors um, for stock. And what we're basically saying is let's preserve cash to pay our people. And we as executives need to be betting on the future of the company. How does that work? Does, do you get a certain number of shares or because the share price is so low now, will you get more shares? And hopefully once this is all over, it could be a win-win, a so to speak. Um, well, I, it's based on last week's calculation of the share price. So to try to guess where the share price is going over the next six weeks, who knows? Right. It could go down significantly, up significantly. Um, what we wanted to do was just find ways to start saving cash. And you start at the top, not at the bottom. And, um, and then those are the types of programs that, if we need to, will continue to roll out. Uh, Matt, in February, when the Macau casinos closed down, you came on the earnings call. You were very transparent about how much money you were spending on salaries because you had kept people employed there, too. What are you seeing in terms of business in Macau now? Uh, Macau is uh, still, the business volumes are still quite low because the borders, um, you know, the, the visas are not being issued to travel right now. The ferries to Hong Kong are still closed. So I would say um, from volume of people coming in, it's roughly at 10% of where it was. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I anticipate that that will continue uh, to grow as China continues to get, get back to work and resume production. There's some global CEOs who now have experience watching this go from China to the United States. Do you have a message for uh, American CEOs who this may be their first time grappling with the extent of coronavirus? So uh, one thing that was helpful for me in the Macau situation, I actually uh, retained the uh, global health director and head of pandemic research from George Washington, uh, Dr. Rebecca Katz. So I could talk to her, we talk every day. So I could, everything that I'm hearing, I could get real time validation, understand the modeling. Um, and so that, that was very helpful to have your own resource that you trust, uh, just to decipher all of this information. And um, the other thing that I would say is, if, if the China experience works, which it feels like it's going to, and we don't see a rapid rise in cases there, um, staying home for a period of time, we'll, we will get to the, uh, we will see the light at the end of the tunnel.